Thanks for tuning in. Uh, in this video, I'm just going to go over some fairly basic flash techniques that we use at Powerhouse Animation. Uh, I tend to create and handle a lot of animatics, so this is the venue I'm choosing for the lesson. So as you know, animation is a time-consuming process, so you want to work smart and take advantage of any tool that helps you in speed and efficiency. Uh, the first thing I'm going to show you is a shortcut in making better simple shapes. So I'm just uh, already in this scene, so what I'm going to do is attempt to draw a circle. And I feel as artists, this is kind of what we do all day, is go, oh, I drew something that's horrible, undo. Oh, that's still awful. Uh, and look at all this time it's taking me. That's kind of better. But just to show you, the tool that I'm talking about is, so you've drawn this basic shape, which even though it's simple and basic, it's not always easy to draw, at least for me. So what you can do is draw this rough circle like I have and make sure that the uh, line is connected. And then you select the line and you go down here and you hit this straighten tool. See, a little pops up what it is. And you hit it and you see it's kind of smoothing out and then pop, voila, it is a nice, prettier circle. So, say my intention was to give this guy like a little speech bubble and uh, give him a little line of dialogue and see about, I don't know, what he says. Oh, an armadillo. That's original for a Texan. Everyone's a critic. This kind of tool can really help along the way. Um, it's really good for things like, you know, eyes and pupils. I mean, even if you're just doing it like this, you can do the same idea and it gives you a much nicer, cleaner shape. Um, it can also be helpful when drawing with a pencil or line tool. For instance, Got this guy going on. Let's say I want to draw this shape like this, but I don't want to keep the intersecting lines. Uh, select the drawing, which I'm going to do now, and hit the straighten tool again. And sometimes it can go too far, but I can just undo and go back, and I just have that one little move to go. But it'll er get rid of all those intersecting lines really quickly if you just want to have maybe a not perfect uh, shape, like a square or a rhombus, so you're not using the, the shape tool to create it, but I uh, want it to be a little wonky, but not have those intersecting lines, and that is a quick fix for that. It seems small in the scheme of things, but taking these steps can wind up saving a lot of time in the long run. Uh, I use both the straighten and smooth tool daily, if not hourly, uh, so I recommend setting up a shortcut key for both. Makes it really easy. Okay. Now that we're back out, let's go over some basic timeline stuff. Uh, so you can see our setup of scenes is this back and forth kind of zigzag approach. We're just kind of going back and forth uh, between two layers, potentially three sometimes, depending on uh, the transitions you have going on. Um, I'm not saying that this is the only way to set up your timeline. Uh, uh, it's just the best for what we have here at Powerhouse with our pipeline. Uh, it keeps the real estate of the timeline relatively small, you know, so most of it, most of the screen is designated to my stage and where I'll be doing all my drawing. So, because I've seen other projects and files where you've just got this never-ending layers, characters, everything's out in the open and you're always hiding your stage to try and get to those things and this just kind of keeps that much simpler and cleaner. So you can kind of see uh, how we do uh, our layout. Hey, where are you going? Whoa, oof. What's the big idea? The big idea is simplicity. So what you're going to do here is go ahead and click in here. Uh, how we have everything set up, uh, we keep the content of the scenes inside the scene symbol and leave the outside for camera moves, and transitions. Uh, this just keeps a cleaner timeline and makes it somewhat easier for timing adjustments as you go. Okay, let's mess with this guy a little more with another transition. Uh, what's happening? Oh, come on. Hey, I'm sorry for before. Truth? I don't know, dude, you're a little salty, but since you apologize, I guess we're cool. 
Yeah! Seriously, what kind of witch are you? <laughs> a cleanup witch. So, next thing is a really simple trick that you may already know. Uh, however, I think I spent years never knowing about this option when I first started. So, let's go in this guy. Say you cleaned up your character with the line tool and added fills, like here, but don't want to keep the lines. Uh, back in the day, I used to double click on the main line and then, you know, have to select all of the lines that it didn't get. That takes time. We've got a lot of floating lines going on out here and uh, it just takes up too much of your time. So, what you can do is select everything on the layer both fill and lines and go to the line swatch tool and see where it has the no lines option and you just click away and there it goes. Uh, same works for the fill. So here's one last tip you may not be aware of in the latest versions of Flash and it concerns audio editing. Cutting audio is never ideal in Flash, but they finally made it possible to split an audio track where you select it on the timeline. So let's go where I want to select it on the timeline right here. So mark where you want it and then right click on the layer like so and choose split audio. And then all you gotta do is drag the keyframe to where you want it to start, which I've marked, pretty easy spot, and you're done. And so is this pro tip special.